our healer, our saviour, our restorer, our friend. And Lord, we bow in your presence here in this place. You know our joys, you know our sorrows, you know our frustrations, you know our concerns. You know the joy of our heart and the breaking of our heart. But God, you know it all. Lord Jesus, over these next few moments, as we consider your word, as we consider what you want to say to us, Lord Jesus, come speak to us. Holy Spirit of God, fill us afresh this day. In Jesus' name, amen. How clever is Kim? Can you put up my first slide of my church news since we have the internet? It's a mega miraculous invention. There we go. Now, if you're wondering where Mama is, she's there. There's. <laughs> she was cremated a couple of weeks ago, and I just wanted to show you just how uh, wonderful the, the table looked and and everything and just for your own yes and maybe those flowers look familiar yes so I just want to let you see that and um, yeah so thanks Kim Kim is very clever she did a tremendous job yesterday thank you Cal and Renee again we had videos coming in from the Philippines and someone had their devices right there oh we had roosters we had fans we had phones digging we had songs in the background we had over in the background and oh it was great yeah but it all worked so thank you tongues we had tongues oh many yes where's them tongue speakers here yeah, they're at the back yeah. <laughs> oh dear amazing where my mind brain quickly goes uh, well that's for me to and god to think about but we're here doing a sermon so don't get so emotional we're still looking at that today from sadness to joy. Maybe that's you today. I'll let you pick which one you want to be. We have many emotions, don't we? Sadness, loss, fear, joy, happiness, the lost found, the hurt cared for. Jesus was joyful, Jesus was sad, Jesus was angry, Jesus was disappointed, Jesus cried and he wept, Jesus had a heart of compassion, Jesus was sad sometimes. In Luke 19, Jesus is travelling to Jerusalem, but as he came closer to Jerusalem and he saw that city ahead of him, he began to weep. It's Luke 19, 41. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it. Now that's a powerful image, isn't it? Our Lord and Saviour weeping over that city. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it. Jesus came as the Son of God to bring life, to bring hope, so that we would have life more abundantly, to, to seek and save the lost, to proclaim the good news, recovery of sight for the blind, the prisoners set free. He came to show the love of his Father. In Matthew 23, 37, we have a similar picture. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stoned, stones God's messengers. How, how, how often I've wanted to gather your children together as a hen protects her chicks beneath her wings, but you wouldn't let me. Three things today so that we can experience hope and joy. Take one step towards the Father. Enjoy a relationship instead of just following rules. Bring someone with you. In Luke 15, Jesus tells an emotional story to help people know the depths of the Father's love. Let me summarize it for you. A father had two sons. The younger one 
wanted to follow his own way, wanted to do his own thing, wanted to set off from the family and live life. He insulted his father beyond belief and says to him, Hey, Dad, can you give me my inheritance now? Give me the blessing now without the relationship. This arrogant, rebellious, entitled son. He was just using his father. The ultimate insult. Dad, basically, I want you dead. I'll have my inheritance now. Thank you very much. In my pocket, off I go. So the son heads off. It's party time. Wrong friends, wrong choices. It's all great till the cash runs out. Amen, anybody? It's all great till the cash runs out. Out of money, out of hope, out of friends, this young son hits rock bottom. How in the world did I end up here? The worst part of this, he realised he was far from his father. Far from home. Far from what his father and family stood for. Can you relate to that? You were not as close to God maybe as you once were. You didn't intentionally rebel. It wasn't deliberate. Maybe you just took a wrong turn. Maybe you drifted away from God. Maybe you slower walk, slowly walked away from his plans or purposes. Other things became the focus. You took God for granted. COVID hit. This rebellious son hits rock bottom, living with pigs. And in Luke 15 verse 17, we have this powerful moment. When he came to his senses. Maybe you're praying that for a family member now. Maybe you're praying that for a child now, a grandchild, a neighbour, a loved one. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am, amongst these pigs, starving to death. He came to his senses. It was so much better at home. I told my dad I wish he was dead. So he plans his apology speech. I'm a loser. I sinned. I'm not worthy to be your son. Please take me back. And can, I, can I live with the hired help and, and be one of them? So he gets up and he heads off to the father and he takes a step. He takes a step. Sometimes we find ourselves in those unexpected places. Let me tell you a story. At age five, his father died. At age 16, he quit school. At age 17, he'd already lost four jobs. At the age of 18, he got married. Between the age of 18 and 22, he was a railway conductor, and he failed at that. How hard to say all aboard. I'm oh, sorry. He joined the army and was washed up at that as well. He applied for law school, where he was rejected became an insurance salesman and failed again. At the age of 19, he became a father. At the age of 20, his wife left him and took their baby daughter away. He became a cook and a dishwasher in a small cafe. He failed in an attempt to kidnap his own daughter and eventually convinced his wife to return home. She was brave. At the age of 65, when he was retired... When he retired and he was bankrupt. Now on the first day of his retirement, he received a cheque from the government for $105. He felt that the government was saying that he couldn't provide for himself or couldn't provide for his family. So he decides to commit suicide. 
It wasn't worth living anymore. He'd failed life. He'd failed so much. And so he sat under a tree, starting to write his will. But instead he wrote what he would have accomplished with his life. What he wanted to accomplish. What he should have accomplished. He realised there was much more that he hadn't done. There was one thing he could do better than anyone else. He really knew how to cook. So he borrowed $87 against his cheque and bought up some chicken and fried it with his own recipe and went door to door selling to his neighbours in Kentucky. Remember, at the age of 65, he was ready to commit suicide. But at the age of 80, good old Colonel Sanders, 88, founded Kentucky Fried Chicken KFC Empire and became a billionaire. On top of all that, he gave his life to Christ as an older man and attended church in Louisville, Kentucky. Don't we love that chicken? The moral of the story, it's never too late to start over. Never give up on the important things. You have what it takes to be successful. You have what it takes to be the hands and feet of Jesus to make a difference. Have you done some things you're ashamed of? Have you done some things you're not proud of? Sure we have. All this son needed to do was to take one step home towards his father. He had no idea how much his father loved him. How every day the father's heart was breaking. And in Luke 15, 20, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. Powerful. Doesn't matter if you've read it 20 times or 2,000 times. That powerful image of the father and the son. That powerful image of God embracing and welcoming you home. Let's celebrate my son is alive. Let's enjoy relationship instead of just following rules. Friends, that older brother was not happy. There's no party for me. I didn't leave. I didn't want you dead. Remember, God wants relationship. The older son was obedient, but not intimate. He was physically present, but his heart was far from his father. Verse 31 of that chapter. My son, the father said, you're always with me. And everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because the brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and now he is found. Now, Christian faith is about relationship and connection, not rules and ritual. Let God welcome you home today. Let him welcome you home. Let him embrace you. Final thing this morning, bring someone with you. God throws a party when one sinner repents. Who are we bringing to the party? Who are we bringing with us? I wouldn't be here today in God's house if someone didn't do, didn't invite, didn't pray, didn't ask, if my parents didn't bring me Whatever it is, I wouldn't be in God's house today if that thing didn't happen. 
I wouldn't have found salvation. I wouldn't be faithfully serving. He loves you with a perfect love. Let him turn your disappointment and your sorrow into joy. He's running towards us, down that road, saying, come home, come home, come home. Final slide this morning. Don't be a fault finder. Be a hope dealer. Don't be a fault finder. Be a hope dealer. Come home. God knows you've failed. God knows you've mucked up. We don't need to remind him. But let us be dealers of hope and faith and love and joy. Let us get all emotional about that. Let us get all emotional about seeing people saved. The hurt healed and lives transformed. May God bless you. Amen.